What is the ideal blend of treasuries and investment-grade corporate bonds in a long-term portfolio? And the second part, any necessity for or significant benefit from an international bond holding in a long-term portfolio? I think you can probably answer the second one in one word, right? Well, I, the international thing kind of mystifies me. Uh, you know, it, it's not going to make much difference what you do as long as international bonds are, have the same you know, quality and protective nature that the U.S. bonds do. So, um, yeah, I, there's some question I just don't have a good answer to. And that's one of them. I think it comes down to a preference. Uh, I do think that it's maybe a little bit mm, peremptory to put these uh, holdings of international bonds and individual stock, uh, international stocks into the uh, retirement plans, target date retirement funds, without asking stockholders, would they like it? Because uh, they're quite large dimensions. It's, I think, uh, Mike will have to correct me here, but maybe 35% international stocks relative to the stock position and 35% uh, international bonds relative to the bond position, something like that, Mike? 30 and 30? 40 and 30. I mean, that's a big change. And if they all do the same, it's fine. But, um, and I, I even, I hope, Somebody talked about it, uh, even thinking of having a target date funds that are U.S. oriented and target date funds that are world, world oriented. Funds are large enough easily to accommodate that. But in any event, that's not the way it happened. And uh, I think we should always have options available that don't encompass international stocks and bonds. It's an important choice. And uh, whether, it's, whether there's going to be a big difference, I don't know. Uh, but my intuition. You know, maybe I'm just proud to be an American, or at least I know I'm free. <laughs> There's a song that goes that way <laughs> called God Bless the USA, which I will say to all of you, God Bless the USA, too. Big part of our family culture. And uh, the first part was? The first part was, what is the ideal blend of treasuries and investment-grade corporate bonds in a long-term portfolio? Well, I have always said the best best blend is not, and this talks about you know, intuition and not maybe thinking things quite through adequately, which is certainly what I have done. And that is when we started the bond fund, I just took the bond index. I figured it was represented. And it turns out it's 70% in treasuries and government guaranteed mortgages. And uh, that, had, that didn't matter much in those days because the yields were running around 8%. But today it matters quite a bit. So you start to reflect times have changed. And I, I would think it would be desirable to have a fund like that, you know, just top of the head, maybe 50% <coughs> high-grade corporates and 50% treasuries and other, go and other government backed mortgage, 50-50, you know, uh, just for the fun of it. But those corporates are now only about 30. So a better representation for a higher yield, and higher yield will lead to a longer return, holding everything else equal in the long run, as we all know. And uh, somebody says, well, that doesn't match uh, the allocation of the index. Well, wait a minute, pal. Where do you think that balanced index fund came from? When I started that, 1993, I think it was, you know, I said 60-40. I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about it, but that seemed like a reasonable number. And there's no 60-40 there's no index, uh, except for the index fund, which is the standard. And uh, so some of this, I think we can overthink. Well, having said that, I made a lot of mistakes in doing all the things I've done. And sometimes intuition doesn't work as well as I think. Sometimes my self-confidence is a little bit on the high side compared to what it turns out. I mentioned picking that quantitative manager. Uh, so I've had, I've had some failures, um, funds that we started that didn't do anything. And uh, so I don't, don't have a good answer. But I do think there should be uh, available to investors who want to take the extra risk in these days of very low yielding uh, bonds, if you want to take a little bit of extra risk, um, you can do it now, by the way, by just owning a treasury fund and our corporate bond, high-grade corporate bond index fund, and uh, it'll, it'll, it'll do fine. But people don't seem to like to do that, and it's hard to explain in the phone. Telemarketing is difficult when you've got to explain things to everybody. So. Uh, uh, I think um, 
I think it's a good idea, but hard to implement. 